It's a simple paragraph, right? I think only has just a few sentences. Great. Right, so it's simple. from way back when is that um, I thought at the high park just meant the fullest flowering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> Good idea for it. Okay. I was looking for something like mm. that in here. say that if it is the one, that it can't be, it's not becoming, so it will be the first. Would you agree with that, Pierre? Of what? There was I, I didn't, I, excuse me, what? He, he asked if it was called the fullest flowering because it was already the fullest blooming and could not become any more, or because it was going to become. Hmm. The issue is whether it's an act or whether it's a potential for action. Yeah. Yeah. And um, anything that is, that in, in, remember in Proclus, it's anything that is an act, not, not potential. But here, see, see, he want, he's differing from Proclus on several good points, and this is this is one of the points. This is why it's pretty central. It seems that the proximity of substance and subsistence to the one is powerfully striking, and uh, suggests that this is a very fundamental um, uh, evolution. Yeah. Um, Right, anything that has any kind of uh, ongoing existence, right, has to have some kind of being. It has to have a certain kind of power just to remain internally to be what it is. And it also has to have some power to be able to express its own activity, right? So. So this is, of course, he's into the game of looking at intelligible triads. Um, and above this, of course, should be, and one of the problems is that this word being for translators has a wide range depending upon the translator. Existence, being, essence, a whole bunch of different translators treat this differently. Uh,
was able to get a picture of a foundation, and so it took me a while to get one. It looks just very much like this. Pretty big deal in some cultures. Yeah. That's a foundation. And on this, you can have a, any kind of superstructure. Now the question is, can we render this first sentence? So, okay, stay with it. Subsistence, which is hyparxis, as the name discloses, reveals the first principle of each hypostasis. Now he's going to unpack hypostasis. as a kind of foundation or base underlining the whole and every superstructure. Now, see that kind of foundation? Is he talking about subsistence or hypostasis in this sentence? <clears throat> Seems like he's turning the thing upside down. Subsistence. Well, Substance. if you had to put a comma somewhere, where would you put it? Is substance a sort of a source of subsistence? Because he's saying it's the foundation. first principle of each hypostasis as a kind of uh, foundation or based upon which the whole of every superstructure, right? Well, arche of the hypostasis means the, the, the chief part of the hypostasis. Or source. Source of the hypostasis. I mean, there's a bunch of different. I like source. I See, because everything is going to be at stake in the, in the next sentence. And therefore, also, the one who gave it this name also placed the hypo part before the arche. Why? Because he wished to show the principle underlining anything ever said to exist. where this language comes from. And here you, you can know? see in this beautiful picture. People love that principle underlying. Right. Everything. All of these are anything said to exist. you. Right, there's a principle underlining all of this stuff. What's he going to call it? And this is the simplicity before all things. Right, before all things. Right. 
should have been before all those things can be said to exist. That would help. To which every composite later is added. So, you know what we need? We need a, how, when was the last time you volunteered? Well, then you have some experience volunteering. <laughs> right? We knew there was no way to escape. <laughs> oh my God. Well, all we need is, I want you to get me something, uh, anything at all, but uh, we want to take the qualities off it so we can see what it is about the qualities, okay? <laughs> Uh, she's on the charge of a committee, and she just called on you to do the work for her. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Isn't that what a committee is? Yes, the print? Yeah. To find something, something. Yeah. How about this? That has so many qualities. But, but I don't just you, let me off. see. It. How would you describe it without the qualities? <laughs> see what I get? I get nothing but laughter from these people. <laughs> Rude. God. Watch, I'll ask Barbara, watch the difference. Okay. Could you get me something without the qualities so we can take a look at them? Give you something without the qualities. No. Re revolt in the ranks? <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, this is an absurd question, but is this the commentator or is this Demasius? Demasius. This is actually his writing. This is not the commentary. So no, no, the commentary. She precedes every one of these with her commentary, and this is not what precedes it. This is not it. what precedes it, okay. I have one more question. The foundation, this language of principle, foundation, subsistence, what is its origin, since it seems to be... What's its origin? Yeah, mean? well, the use of this kind of idea of subsistence and principle underlying Mm -hmm. And composite is added to it. I I I'm baffled by it because why would you? Ch well, okay. I thought maybe it had some source. The idea, well, because subsistence um, as a translation of hyparxis leaves me baffled. Well, then, wait a minute. Not only that, but you have the book with it, don't you? Oh, here, I, uh, I happen to have one, and, and she happens to have something called a glossary. A glossary, uh -huh. A glossary, excuse me. Excuse me. See, hey, a lot is at stake while she's looking it up, right? Look her. For anything that's said to exist, there must be something that is very, and that's prior to existence, before all of the other qualities are added to it, combined. You know you have these inverted according to the, to the glossary. No, I don't. What did I do? Subsistence is hyparxis and subsistence ah. is usia. Oh my gosh, you're right. Ah! Here, I've been wondering about that the whole time. For every usia is a composite, either through unity or through a mixture of some other. It's necessary if something is going to be a composite for the absolute one and simple to underlie it. Is there a 
and to subsist before it, since without it nothing could ever proceed into existence. See, Plato in the Republic as an example, he's going around and saying the only real question and there's only one in the Republic in the education, is is the one itself. You can't do that. These are different. Because he's going around saying whatever you're talking about, there must be a one a, and subs and simplicity. Yes. So he, he's see before it comes into existence. Therefore, it must be there before existence. Therefore, the one and simplicity underlying everything. So this is the. This is the addition. And look what he's what are you saying about it? And this is the one that's beyond all things and, and underlies them, which is the cause of every substance. But yet it's not, but it's not yet substance. This is the one that is beyond all things, underlies them. The cause of Usia, but it's not yet a Usia. For every good old Rusia, is a composite, either through unity or through mixture in some other way. Would you agree? Hey, by the way, do you know anything that doesn't have parts? The thing without qualities, wouldn't that be? <laughs> See, one of the uses of the word usia is that which binds things together and holds them together into a one. That's one of the uses of the word usia. Right? It's a binding power, right? So therefore, for every who see is a, is a composite, either through unity, has to be a unity. Who see has to be unity because that's what it is. It's a force that does this, that is, brings things into a unity. Or through mixture, either parts come together or through a mixture and it can vibrate. Or in some way or another. And you know what? That's one. That's one. Right? We see it's one. Makes everything one. <coughs> and it's necessary if something is going to be a composite for the absolute one and symbol to underlie it and to subsist before it Since without this, nothing else could, pers could proceed into existence. Would you agree? Without this, nothing could come into existence. Because if everything has a bunch of parts to it, what holds the parts together? Some kind of unity. Ah! We see it. There's, therefore, before anything could come into existence, you have to have that curious thing we see it. And in itself, it has to be simple. <clears throat> yeah. 
therefore subsistence, hyparxis, is the one of every substance. Hey. Of every, well, watch now. Try it again. Therefore, the fullest flowering is one of every sub, of every usia. See, if it does this, if it does this, that's a flowering, isn't it? Bringing everything into a unity. Therefore, they fit. Right? Anything that comes into existence is a flowering. But it's held together. Ah, usia and hyparxis. Dangerous now. Therefore, that fullest flowering. Hey, you know that's this, this. Look here. If this takes place, come on. If this takes place, what's it become? A oneness. Oh. Therefore, subsistence is the one of every substance. And he's saying that oneness, as it comes out, that, you know what that? That's the one itself. Or the first hypothesis. Do it again. Hey, would you agree, yes or no? Whatever comes into existence that has parts, yes or no? Except children in Brooklyn. <laughs> no parts. No, no, no. They have to have, even if a part has to be. Agree? Agree. Everything, therefore, has to have some binding power to keep it together. <whistles> what does that do to it? Make it a one? That itself is a simplicity, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, the <laughs> fullest flowering of it makes everything a one. That's the, per that's the one itself. Ooh, what is he doing? He's making it a much shorter trip to the one itself. <laughs> yeah. So everything. He pass through all the way. Everything. Yeah. Gives a pretty good, good picture, too. Of Pardon? Gives a good picture of how to get there. Yeah, more. Well, it's what I, be, I strive for. Is mm -hmm. to get that state of mind, mm -hmm. the oneness, or yeah. the one. Yeah. And um, I just got to see that yeah. <laughs> really nicely there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is why he's going to be using in a short while a lot of, of uh, Aristotle's terminology, right? Act, coming together in an act, and, and well, that language which is appropriate to it, because that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Right? Because for this to do this, that means it must have had that power. It must be ready. Agree? This is a power. Yeah. Coming together, pulling together is a power. Well, and it directs itself toward an end, does it not? Mm. So you're going to get the you're going to get the causes quickly. That for the sake of which it came into existence, mm. right? And since this is a uh, a complete act. Yet it's ongoing, continuous. Therefore, whatever the cause of it is, since this is already showing an action of unity or, or wanting, the one must be its cause. One itself must be must underlie it. Look here, it's necessary if something is going to be a composite for the absolute one and simple to underlie it and to subsist. See, for anything to be what it is, 
it must be the fully what it is. Well, that's a, that's a high parsis. Without it, nothing could proceed into existence. Therefore, subsistence is the, the one of every uh, substance. Therefore, subsistence is the one of every substance. Right, right, right. Therefore, the fullest flowering, right? There it is. Therefore, the fullest flowering is the one, right? Is the one. Which is beautiful of every substance. We see it. See, change the words. Get the words out. Right. If this goes on, there must be some result. This act must produce something. Oh, that produces a completion. And we've been using the word a flowering or a completion. Right? That is the thing becomes most fully what it is. Given everything that everything that happened to it, it's, that's exactly what it happens. Right. I mean, no matter what a thing is, you know what's interesting about it? It bears all the scars of everything that ever happened to it. Yes or no? Yes. No matter what happened, not more or less. Agree? Yes. Yes. Hey, every dent in this is abs actually a perfect result of everything that's happened to it. Agree? Not more, not less. Right, therefore it's most fully what it is because that's what it is for it to be the way it is. Right, agree? That's perfect. It's better than perfect, right? It's better than perfect because that's what it is. It bears all the marks, all the, all the background, everything that ever happened to it, it carries it along. That's what it is. If good old hyparxis, what it is, what it is, in its own simplicity, is positive before Usia, well, yeah, you might be able to do that, then it's a product of Usia. Well, that's interesting. Producer of. Pardon me. You're right. Do it again. Uh, if subsistence. If the hypothesis. If hypothesis in its own simplicity is posited before Usia, it is as producer of Usia. Mm -hmm. So that hypothesis is entirely paternal as well. Mm -hmm. I was reading one sentence on top of another. Okay. Yeah. If the hypothesis is its own simplicity, is positive before we see it, that's the producer of it. Of those, uh, so that the uh, subsistence is entirely paternal. See? He wants, he needs this word, paternal. fatherly because he's in the realm of the intelligible and therefore he landed on the term father these the, the father series um, there are different kinds of series of fathers um, in this case um, In this case, we would have to know which one of the triads he's talking about, because he could be talking about uh, intellect,
only in Proclus he calls this uh, intellective. Now, each one of these is a triad. And each one can be said to have a hyparxis. Uh, each one of these can be called the father, fatherly, in a fatherly series, and a triad. Hold on, um, boss. Could you, could, could you read those three? Uh, those three intelligible? Well, intellectual. we have those. What? Seer, seeing, seeing. Right? In the realm of the mind, in terms of vision, this is intellect. This is the, uh, in the intelligible, the object is the intelligible. And this is a combination of the two of them, sometimes called intelligible intellect or in intelligible intellectual. This is also called um, intellective. And uh, in Damascus, in Proclus, it's called intelligible intellectual. Is there one? Is there one that uh, that has a more that, ha that has that carries that idea of paternal with it, being uh, being productive or being uh, overflow? Is there one of those ideas that you would say is is has the paternal aspect to a higher degree? When intellect is active and encounters the intelligible, which is being itself. And it also has the, the sense of mind or, or, or intelligible. And it, is, and it is vital or a vitality to it, a vital. Or uh, not good, vital. So that's the experience. See, the, the, this is. So all metaphysics comes, all of this metaphysics comes down to just, just uh, a simple problem. Uh, grant for a moment that someone can encounter this state of one, the one, right? the unmentionable, right? pure, Simple, one, the one. And also, uh, most brilliant light of being. And this experience that we're just talking about is obviously has the greatest sense of re real or reality. Nothing else is like it, therefore it's called reality. Okay, this guy now walks away having had both experiences. And he's gotta walk out and say to himself, what the hell has I got to do with anything I'm walking on? How does this fit into my everyday world? How does it fit? That's the problem. So the first thing the guy does is says, well, I know one thing about this. Oh, yeah, it's real. So what does he have? He has to recognize that in this experience, there are a whole bunch of statements, clearly, you can make about it. Ah, my, my, also beauty, uh, simple, um, 
mind, reality. And uh, you can say, well, these are different, yet in one way they're, you're all talking about the same thing, different aspects of the same thing. And they may not even be different aspects. They're, they're ways of saying what it is you can infer from this experience. Agree? Yes or no? Well, these are the forms. This is the primarily the form, primary form. And since it admits of greater and greater depth, then there is something that must be seeing it greater and greater depth, and therefore rest in motion. There's a kind of rest in motion. So these are the primary ideas. Oh, okay, another one. He's got this. He's got that one again. Which is higher? Which is higher? No, no, no. The, the guy's had both. No, if he doesn't know that, we'll lock him up. Oh, uh, boy, tough call, but I'm going to have to go with the one. Why? Because uh, I read it in the book somewhere. It's a good book. Why? Why is one said to be higher than the other? Simply. <clears throat> cause of it. Mm. Hmm? The cause of it. That's right. Because if you go on the one assumption they all make, anything that is, whatever the heck it is, it has to have a cause. This is, therefore? Must have a cause. And therefore? Higher. That's right. Well, that's no way you just said. You just said we have to build into our understanding certain principles that have to be apparent in this experience. Cause. Oh, idea of cause. Oh. Uh, what else can you say about that? Can you say that? Um, uh, perfect? Yeah. See. What ideas now can you bring together by combining this gives you a vocabulary, a primary vocabulary of terms to talk about that experience? Therefore, you're going to say, in the very nature of reality, there are these ideas. These are the so-called ideas of forms. I hate using that word. That's what you, this is what you behold. This is what, that's what a form is, literally, right? right? This dude beholds this, sees it directly. And that's the Greek word for idea, idea, right? So uh, this is the primary vocabulary. Now what has he got to do? What happened to myself? You know, I used to have a self. <laughs> I mean, I used to, you know, people used to call me and I'd turn around. <laughs> but in that experience, it ain't got that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what does that mean? You have a new idea of self. Right, because, okay, so therefore, out of this necessarily comes two ideas, right? The image of a self, and if that is truly mind, and there's no difference between this as mind and this, hey, no difference between the seer and the seer, see, there's no difference. Right, they're all interrelated. They're not separate and distinct. This is what distinctions have made. Oh, you're making distinctions. Oh, oh. Well, then what the hell is this? If that's real, what's this? How did this get here?
I mean, why is there this? Now you got a bunch of questions telling you. And this is what you start with. And now all you've got, all you've got is you don't want to bullshit. You want to use your best thinking, best reflection, to see whether now from this everything else can make sense. That's the difference between science and philosophy. Philosophy deals with down with these things, hoping to finally get a final understanding of it to answer all questions. This doesn't even attempt to do that. This is saying, no, 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 no. We start from this and explain things. And by the way, if we can't explain everything in the physical world, we don't give a damn. <laughs> We're not upset. All it has to do is what they call, give it a likely story, saving the appearances. That's where the term comes in, right? We'll give a rational account of this everyday world. Of Save the appearances. We don't want to call it a Maya. We don't want to call it illusion and dismiss it. So we'll find a way of, but it has to fit. Whatever we come up with has to fit this. It has to be deduced from this. Right? So now he's looking at this chalk or anything, right? What does science do? Science is just one thing, isn't it? Right. Right. He's going to pound this, isn't he? Right. Torture nature is what they say, right? That's what they say. That's what Bacon, right? Torture nature, make her reveal her secrets. Right. So that's what we do. We use all kinds of things. Break it apart. Then you have the pieces left over. Now you know what it's made of. You know what you can do now? You can arrange those in ways you can make a buck. And what's the biggest way to make a buck? Make a bomb. <laughs> right? Therefore, we want science and military to go together, hand and foot. No, no, what is it? Hand and what? Foot and mouth. Hand and mouth. Hand and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Right? That's what Descartes said. The only thing worth studying is things that have extension. You break it apart and you measure them. Right. Then you try to find out what glue fits them together. Right. But whatever it is, you want to break it apart again. Whatever it is, you keep breaking it apart. Breaking it apart. They got these big machines out there. Pound the hell out of something they can't even see. <laughs> Impossible to see it, right? It only lives for a couple of millionth of a second anyhow. A trillionth of a second. Doesn't matter. They're still doing it. It's different with this world is. Can you explain the saving the appearances again? I've always associated that with sort of bad science where the guy with the hammer has an idea of the way it works and then he wants to dismiss the things that don't fit with that view. I could understand someone using it that way. That isn't the way in which it was usually used. It comes out of the time is. Save the appearances. Try to give an account of the appearances from the highest principles. So it does not become called an illusion. Dismiss it. It has a place. It has a see, it has a place. Oh, I see. Thomas Taylor had a nice. So like, hey, we're back with the truck. So what is Damascus doing? He's saying, I'll tell you, take anything you want. Hey. Oh, where was that beautiful picture? Oh. What's the chalk? If you take it to him, <laughs> strip it of all its qualities, what do you got? The ineffable is what I was saying. The ineffable, and he's going to call it? Simple one. Yeah. About which you can say nothing, because whatever you say about it would be a quality. And that's going to be the ineffable. Now he's going to take that one idea, and now he's going to apply it to all two thinkers, especially Iamblichus and secondarily Proclus, and he's going to try to relate it to uh, two, two great works, of course, Plato and especially the Chaldean oracles. But that's his goal. And uh, so, look here. You got a problem here, see? Let's make sure you see it, all right? Would you not agree, you know one thing, in this experience there's something seeing, yes or no? Mm -hmm. 
You're experiencing it. There's something you're experiencing. It ain't the eyes and it ain't the nose. Oh, hey, it admits of degrees. This is the important part. It admits of degrees. If it admits of more profound degrees, then there's something that's remaining seeing it in various degrees of depth. Ah. Oh, then that means there is that, and there must be a process intellecting. Ah, that's it. That's this. This. That's this. Intellecting process, going deeper into the same thing, the intelligible. What does he say? Whatever you want to say exists. It's got to have three things. Right? You have to say that it has some kind of being some kind of power, some kind of activity, each one of these. Like it or not, that's the way it is. And by the way, um, anything that is, is going to, because of this process, is right, the very root of it is a power, Right? There's a power. We see it as a power. So therefore, all of these are powers. If they are powers, plural, then however, it, however, hey, if we can map all the necessary powers to understand this and then uh, this is the realm of knowing and then the realm of understanding Ah. ah, then if we can then take that understanding we're developing to, to do this and apply it to the origin, then you have cosmology. But not cosmology in the modern sense, but a cosmology to show you that the universe is perfectly good and is striving towards good and therefore its provenance. Right? Plato's time is, is not a cosmology. It is a cosmology that's going to show the, the goodness of God or providence, right? Because that's what he's doing. Because in this, you're going to walk away and you're going to say, hey man, not only is it one, but hey, once you see this, you go nuts over it because you want to see it again, right? So love, of, this is called wisdom. Love of wisdom philosophy. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, you're going to say, you know what, all the things I thought were good, this is it. So then it takes on the other name, the good. Ooh. Now he's got to show that wherever he goes. Whatever he's dealing with, he has to show us as you proceed lower, each step has to be good, lesser, lesser, lesser. Still a one, 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 wherever you go. Still has being all the way down to hair, mud, and dirt. And now can you make sense of them? You know what he's doing here? He's participating in this. Oh, I need a new word. Participation. Oh. So uh, these three triads essentially He's going, to, he's going to make the point. I don't want to make it a... Uh, they are all interrelated. So, uh, so you have being, power, activity. Right? Uh, for this, right, would you agree... Return, right? 
All of these are together. Another word for that is being, right? Pure being, it depends upon in which way. It has different words being in different ways. But in any case, uh, each of these have these three levels. Well, the top of these are called fathers. Right. Ones in the middle are called mothers. Ones in the end can be called, uh, obviously, children, but uh, they're active to return. So, um, uh, I have three things. That's what you're going to say. He said the first set, first triad, the primary is going to be the secondary third. There is a mixture, but you can see that necessarily uh, each is different because they, it, there's a different predomination of each one of these aspects in the three. Okay, then he's going to name them. Right. And each one that has a name is going to have a function. If it has a power, it has a function. If it has a power, it has a function. If it has a function, it has an activity. If it has an activity, then it must, it must have had it. Therefore, it possesses, there must be, it possesses the, the uh, particular uh, hyparxis of itself, right? And for each, Right? If you line up each of the powers, then each of the powers can be represented in a figure for each one of these different powers that you can assign to it is going to be able to have some kind of metaphor. Or you can say each one of these can be called a god. For each god is a particular simplicity, right? pure, but has a certain particular power which functions within this, and that's where they get their names. So we'll get all of that and stick it in. Right. But, uh, see, but he's not going, he's not building a theology at this point. At this point, he's going down to everything. So in a, a little while, he's going to go up, and that's when he's going to assign a lot of the names in the Chaldean Oracle. And uh, I don't know, but I wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for us humans that, that go through this this process of uh, the being uh, seeing seeing this and going through it, uh, the, the being, the intellect, the vitality. Well, you don't well, see this. The only thing you see is this. You infer these ideas. You don't see these. These you infer from making distinctions about this. Okay, okay so I, I, either way. Yeah, okay. Um, Maybe that was obvious, but go ahead. Well, I, I, I go back to this. You have understanding underlined over here. Speaking of all, uh, I'm, I'll just be, I'll just be forward. Uh, and Plato talks about the best thing for mankind being that which is learned, beholding the good. So that which is the idea of learning and understanding all this. I was. Oh, oh, yeah. What are we supposed to? Yeah, I got a very yeah. fine quote. Where's my thought? Of all the books, you know, this is a, I really think these dudes are right when they say that they think they could rebuild the whole Platonic tradition. If it was ever lost, all they need is the Chaldean oracles. It's that magnificent. In any case, um, um, now this is a, uh, Proclus, 
uh, on uh, a quote about Proclus's understanding of the oracles. And I'm on page 95 of this great work of Julian Chaldean oracles. Moreover, it is plain that this intelligible cannot be apprehended by a reasoning process, but as the oracle says, if you apply your intellect, you will come by intellectual intuitions into contact with this intelligible, and thus you will apprehend it as understanding some particular thing. You cannot grasp this intelligible by laying hold of it according to a certain measure of form and knowledge. For those, uh, well, he goes on and talk about it, but um, it's by the flower of our intellect, hyparxis, we apprehend the intelligible established on the summit of the first intelligible triad. As you can see, you will come by in intellectual intuitions into contact with this intelligible, and thus you will apprehend it as understanding some particular thing. See? Cultivation of the understanding awakens the intellect. The intellectual intellect then prepares you for this vision. So that's the goal, one of the goals of it. See, to, to, it's an intellectual yoga in that respect. The, uh, the, the word that's used in, at least in the Republic, uh, the Greek word, man, manthana, it's, it's one of the... It's, well, the one in the Republic, the, uh, there are very few words that describe it. But uh, that's in the Parmenides. I mean, there are several references to the one. One of the great ones is in the idea of justice. You have to become one in yourself. So, go ahead. Well, I, I guess I'm, 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 trying, I'm trying to see what, uh, I'm not sure what I'm trying to see, to be honest. Well, get some help from Mark. Yeah. Mark, what does he mean? <laughs> okay. In, this, in the sixth book of the Republic, Plato says that the best thing for man is to, is the best for man is that which is learned the only good, right? And the, the idea, and the word, when he says that which is learned, the, the idea of learning is the, is the Greek word manthana, manthana, some, something along those lines, I'm not a Greek scholar, so forgive me for that. Um, and so if, if it is, if he says, if he's saying that, uh, I'm, I'm pointing to Plato, maybe I should stick with this Chaldean but I'm going to bring in Plato anyway. Um, if he's saying that if the best for us is that which is learned, right, in that, in that statement, he's saying that which is learned. So in, in here, I guess I want to see the learning in here. Not just beholding something, beholding is fine and dandy, but what, but what are we, we going to learn? I heard only about one third of what you said. You lost your voice, or I lost the hearing of it in the last third. Can, did you hear that, Barbara? Uh, yeah, I heard what he said. He he's comparing Plato to, which is the part you heard probably, in Book Six, the learning of the idea of the good, to um, this experience in mm -hmm. Demasius, and he's saying that um, it looks as if the learning is the important part, the learning of the idea of the idea of the good. And he doesn't see that learning in this um, uh, account no. of Demasius so far. That's right. And that we just have the beholding. Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought he said. Mm. But he answered it. Yeah, Did it's it? not really a question. It's not a question. He it's answered a, it's it. A that's what I thought. I was going to blame it on my hearing. Yeah. yeah, you're quite right. Yeah. We can talk about this. But if you want to see it, you've got to go beyond the understanding. The understanding awakens the intellect for that experience. Remember, intellect is in this sense of the word, the eye of the eye on the soul. 
the eye of the soul capable of perceiving the nature of reality. Yeah, apologies if I but you know that. So I, I keep wondering whether or not you have a different question. I do. Good. Probably. <laughs> Want to try it? Try it, David. Well, I have a similar question. By turning around, freeing yourself from distinction, distraction, trying to see the soul for what it is, how does it naturally happen that this group of ideas and this group of terms... How, how does it happen that... That this idea, these group of terms, and these kinds of distinctions about it naturally come about? Okay. <coughs> you cannot have this experience without that, period. You can have clear mind, this kind of state, without those. Okay. Yeah. What sure Plato is insisting upon is that you have to you have to go through this for this. I never doubted it. No. But in this experience, that's it. Everyone will agree. I never doubted it because no. I know exist there, but no. I just can't read a single word up there that you wrote. So I'm going to have to get up there and take a look later on. Uh, I, I would... Simple it, mind... Well, the only word you might be able to find up here might be, if you push it, simple. What have you and I had my doubts when I put that up, but that's why... But. I really hate for you to be redundant, but there's three others there, and I, and I would appreciate it if you read those. In addition to simple, what are the other three that well, I would encounter? Yes. You, can't, you can't read the terms on the little circles. Mind. Reality. Ah, reality. Beauty. And then the bottom, rest in motion? Yeah, rest in motion. And then above it, it's just different aspects. No. Okay, thank you. And you find another one. Same. No matter how long you're in, no matter how profoundly you go into it, it's always the same. It's like the diver, you know, who made a deep, deep dive in the ocean, and he comes up and he says, you know what I found all the way down? Water. <laughs> <laughs> the guy says, yeah, what do you expect? Right? But you can go deeper in the same. So therefore the idea is same is there. But wait a minute. But still, there are variations that are uh, different between uh, shallow and a deep and more penetrating. Therefore, difference. Difference. Same and difference must follow. Mm. And also, this is something. It is something. Therefore, it is limited by being what it is. Yet, in terms of its boundary, there aren't any. Therefore, it's unlimited. Therefore, these are the two major ideas of Plato the one, limit, unlimited. But you can't apply limit and unlimited to this. And why does Plato, why and where does Plato say that you have to go through, right, the idea of the good and then the good that you just mentioned? Well, I'm not to make sure of your question. Uh, it is not, you are not, you're wondering whether or not there's a simple statement you can find in the Republic that argues why you have to go this way? Or you just, I, I thought you just mentioned early, earlier that um, when you're speaking with David that you can have a clear state without these distinctions, right, or these terms. And I thought you said that uh, Plato says you have to go through uh, the sequence of the most brilliant light yes. and then the good. Yes, yes. Remember, he says, people who experience this, there's a danger, and they may want to stay there. And we don't want to allow that. Therefore, you have to go beyond it. Next. By going beyond it, then there's a return back to the cave. But can't, I guess Why? Why? Because now you, can, now you understand completely the images which formerly absorbed everyone in the cave. They don't know what they are person who then comes back from such a trip in the cave, according to Plato, they have eyes which see 10,000 times better than anyone else. They understand. Now they understand the, what ignorance is. They fled it without understanding it. 
by coming back, now they understand the nature of ignorance. It would be safe to say that they learned something? So and I, therefore, so what? What does that give him, by the way? I guess my, uh, my question then is... is Good, I'm glad is, you uh, skipped that one, man. I got to lose a got free of that one, right? <laughs> Boy, I'm sure glad of that. <laughs> yeah. Can, uh, can one skip the idea of the good, so to speak? Or yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are systems that do both. Uh, Bhagavad Gita stays here. But in Plato's... Tibetan, Tibetan Book of the Dead, both. Whole sections of Buddhism, only this. But what about in Plato? Do, both. Does, does he say that, uh, you know, is it necessary to do them uh, or, you know, in a sequence or one... Um, Oh, I, I was th I was oh. I thought you said that in Plato you have he says you have to go through this development where you have this insight into being, but that's, and then you know you're quite right. On. But that's you're asking a different question. You're asking is it possible to make a jump and to do it backwards? Go to the one and then the idea of the good. Yeah, sure. Right. <clears throat> no. Isn't it likely that if two dudes experience this and they're having a beer and one says to the other you know I think I know where you can also have an experience like this do you think they'd both say no to order another beer or do you think one of them at least would go in pursuit of it one of them would probably explore why? it why why Great compliment to the mind. Mm -hmm. It's compliment to the mind. Yes, it's all. Also, here, <clears throat> here, you, the good and the one is the same. Here, you now recognize goodness permeates all reality. What's that worth? It tells well. Here, you can make statements like thinking is the is the sickness of the mind. Here you can say, don't be so foolish, shut up. Right? The opposition, the different position. So Proclus is saying, <clears throat> and what we're reading, hey, given this, now I can show you from what this kind of reasoning that we're doing, why everything mirrors or is in the presence of the foundation of the one. For the use of two ideas, hyparxis and usu. Foundation of everything. Nothing can come into existence without either. See, Pro Proclus does the same thing in one sense. Proclus says, hey, you know, uh, <clears throat> being has the greatest reach. Right? Because of these, see, of these things, uh, being, being vitality, and uh, which goes further in creation. <clears throat> Things that have mind must have vitality and must have a body. But there's some things that don't have mind but have vitality. Therefore, vitality reaches further in the nature of things than mind. But everything, if it is anything, must have some degree of some kind of being. Therefore, that has the longest reach, as it were, that permeates all. So Damascus is saying, let's take this on the simplest level, everything, right, chalk. And I'll show you the highest thing and the so-called lowest thing. So everything is profound. Everything is ineffable. And the whole question is, would you, would you be doing something different if you have this view than if you're going around recognizing everything as a one? Would you be doing something different if you were doing one or the other? And what difference does it make to do one or the other? Right? 
you make that? Could you? Could you make that? Uh, could you make that clearer? Uh, mm -hmm. I, they seem. I doubt it. <laughs> I'll take the golden call. Uh, <laughs> Say, is this one? Yeah. Huh? Is this? Sure. Yes. One. 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 Oh. What do they have in common? One. What's that? Oh, come on. Can't even say it is. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with that. He would say, hold on to that question. That's the only real question in the Republic. There's any other question in the Republic. And all the training and all the education of the philosopher king, it's only a question. Okay, so you go around, what does the want? Nature of the one. Everything is a one. What's the difference between that going around and saying everything is ineffable? Would that be different? The question is, what, what is the difference worth? Not that Plato doesn't say the one is ineffable, of course he does. But Proclus is taking that as his major theme. Mm. He's saying, I can, I can rethink all of Plato with this one accent and this one appears to be a slight difference, but it undermines, goes through everything. Mm. Right, David? Uh, usually. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to go there. Well, there's a lot of room for everyone. Yeah, I noticed. That's not crowded. <laughs> I like the ocean. Yeah. Uh -huh. Even people from Brooklyn. Seems like Proclus is like pumping the mystery back into one. Like, like people had like taken it for granted that ever uh, possibly that okay, one, 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 one. Okay, everything's one, fine. But like maybe he's. Uh, why don't you come forward, then I don't have to keep coming over here to listen. Oh, he's, he's having a little trouble hearing. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That yeah. was helpful. Got him, yeah, David. That was peanut gallery, though. What do you got? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Could I get the retweet list wherever it's wandered? Yeah. The idea of ineffable versus uh, the different, the distinction or the difference between seeing things as ineffable ones no. or versus seeing thing, things no. as ones. Uh, Would it make a difference to you? Yeah. Okay. Then the guy's worth reading. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Good. Then I'm out of here. <laughs> Now look here, here's the real question. How much more of, let's see, I haven't really, I'd like to get into Damascus, and that's going to take some time. And uh, you have to think about, uh, should we continue with Damascus? Yeah. Or slip into something else? Mm -hmm. We still can do more beautiful work and Julian's this. If you have this, which is a beautiful edition. What is that? Uh, the first eight pages will do you great. What, what is that? Right, from one to eight. It's, 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 it's the Julian. It doesn't seem like there's any problem with trying to combine the Chaldean oracles with Damascus, so why don't we just keep doing both? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, by the way, you're quite right. What I like, by the way, about this edition is that their commentaries by Proclus, Celsus, uh, Plato, and they're very beautiful, and Porphyry. And that was called you know, the Julian edition? You know. And uh, really a very fine piece of work. Sure glad we got it. We, it seems like we ought to note that should the retreat come together, there won't be a Friday night. That's true. I don't know that it will. Neither do I. Right? But if it does, so people who are here, you should be aware you might get an email saying it's off. Friday night here is off. And no. the retreat's on. No. Daniel, I don't know what to do with 50%. It just means I have no shirt. Oh, <laughs> you're half committed. 
Okay, I, right. I thought maybe one arm and the leg were going to be there. Or no, no, I would like to come. I, it's hey. just a financial question. It depends on the final figure sure. and, and my own. Uh, Give her a check, tear it in half. Fifty <laughs> percent. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay.